This is a I only touch greatness remix. Scan the code and follow. What up, is your man Money V? Repping that bass shit all day, bitch. And I'm chilling with I only touch greatness podcast. So growing up in Oakland, correct? Uh, what was childhood like? What was what? What was childhood like growing up? Oh, um, childhood. I mean, it was it was it wasn't exactly the normal childhood. I would say um, a lot of people know or don't know that uh, my father was in the Black Panther Party. So I grew up. You know, I went to the school founded by Huey P. Newton in the Black Panther Party. Kind of grew up uh, just you know. In the city, living like, like we do, yeah. you know what I mean. And, and plus, you know, my my family's originally from Philadelphia, so you know, I would travel from back and forth, east coast to west coast, you know, in the summer times or when I didn't have school. So I kind of, even though you know I'm from Oakland, the Bay Area, um, I kind of experienced both coasts growing up. Okay. okay. Do you do you play any other? Sp- any sports or anything uh, when you're growing up? Did I play? Um, well, the only thing that I really got into, well, when I was younger, younger, I played hoop until uh, I stopped growing and everybody kept growing. So <laughs> yeah. I wasn't, you know, I'm five three, so that that didn't work out for me. But I actually wrestled in high school and I, I was pretty good. Okay, yeah, I'm not much taller than that. I'm only five five, so yeah, so I could. Uh, I was choking cats out yeah. in high school. <laughs> yeah. They always told me my growth spurt was coming. So I've been waiting since elementary school for that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you say uh, your biggest influences are in your career? Um, one of my biggest probably is, is too short just because being from Oakland and him being there and me actually being able to see somebody in my city physically touch him. Um, it gave me, the inspiration or at least the belief that I could do it too, you know, cause when I was growing up, I thought that you had to be more than likely you had to be from New York or even LA to put a record out, you know, cause we didn't, we didn't, the labels and, and the, and the, and the uh, companies weren't around us, but then, you know, too short. I, I had his tape since like 1983 is when I first heard too short and Freddie B. And the first 12 inch that he put out was in 86. So when he actually put out a record and I went to the record store and bought a record with two short, I was like, no fucking way. You know what I mean? Cause you remember in 86 and you think about it, it's amazing that he's still relevant because in 86 is when Run DMC put out Raising Hell. And we look at them as like relics, uh, yeah. Karis one and BDP and all of those guys. But when you think of two short, you still think of right now. So yeah, you know, I think I think we have to appreciate Too Short for the the, the work yeah. and the and him mm-hmm. to be very relevant. And he's even got new music right now too. With that, that's what I'm saying. Sport. He has a new record mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. Well, he got an album out with with a E40 that's out yep. right now. Mount, so, yeah. And Mount Westmore, yeah. the one with ain't gonna do it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And Mount Westmore, yeah, mm-hmm. but but Mount Westmore with Easy, not Easy, but uh. E forty Snoop and um and two, well yeah and, two and short, Ice Cube, yep and yeah. Ice Cube. So um, what what age did you start rapping, and when did you realize you were good? Um, you know, like I said, growing up on both coasts, I was always exposed to music. So I, I think I probably really started taking it a little serious right around thirteen, fourteen, and. By the time I was 15, 16, people were telling me that I was good enough to do it for real. So um, at, a, at that age, I just had had the belief. Now, I didn't know when it was going to happen and how. I just knew eventually that it probably would. And and it, it wasn't like, I'm like, oh, I'm good. It was like enough people around me were telling me that I was good enough that I just had that belief and I always had the support of my family, you know, and close friends. Okay. Right. And that's a good thing. Um, what, what made you, um, because I always, well, I always was listening 
to Digital Underground. Like, who came up with the name? And did you, because I was looking at it a little bit, did they even want to pick you yet at, on, the, on the Digital Underground? And how did y'all come with the name Digital Underground? Um, Shock G came up with that name. And from what I understand, it was like, you know, because 87, 88, when we really, the group really started, um, there was no digital. Everything was analog. You know what I mean? So there was only talk of digital, or, or you know, digital was very futuristic. And we, we, you know, we set out and we believed that our sound and our music was, was the future. It was futuristic. But at the same time, hip hop on a whole, on a whole was still underground, right? So representing hip hop, it was still, it was still an underground music. It hadn't gone totally pop and, and everything that it eventually would become. Yeah. It was still an underground art form, pretty much. So, you know, you have the, so, so basically if you put digital and underground together by our meaning, we're saying we're the future of this genre, of, of this hip hop that we do. Okay. Right, because y'all was the future, because to me, I, I, I put it like this, y'all was kind of like the P-Funk of like the futuristic style of, you know, hip hop. Like y'all was kind of like the parliament no. from from uh, the hip hop era. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all sound was so crazy. And speaking of the sound, like who was y'all's producer too? Because this just that chemistry. And how was that chemistry like with you and and the rest of y'all like in there? Like how did that come? Shock G was the producer. Shock G and DJ really? Fuse. Yeah, we, we did everything. Like Shock, he it was his it was his baby and it was his vision, right? So he he was the producer. He did all the album cover art. He drew all of that shit. Um he produced the Humpty Dance, Do What You Like, you know, all of our big hits. Yeah. He produced Fuse helped produce and, and did all the scratches. <laughs> you know, we you know, conceptually we all came up with these ideas we were bringing musicians and different people to add to um but it was it was all us personally mm -hmm. humpty dance is mm -hmm. one of my favorite songs oh it's in my top two or three i even dance around because i look like the song is, i look like shock the white shock g with my beak and then uh and, and then uh so yeah the humpty dance was it, it was inspired by the earthquake i read somewhere can you tell yeah, us well, how that happened well, we, we had the song before we had the dance, but we had to do the video. And a, a week before we did the video, there was the big um, earthquake in San Francisco in 1989, October yeah. of 89. And, you know, when we were kind of like trying to figure out what the dance was going to be, um, between Shock and my, and my younger brother, Cullen, they were kind of goofing around. And it was like, man, you know, what if, you know, move like like the earthquake, like we shaking. You know what I mean? And he started making that, he, you know, making the motion, and then we just associated it with it. You know, so we definitely were inspired by that event for sure. Okay, hey, well, that, that was crazy because Mike, um, you got one. Yeah, you got one? what's your uh, favorite venue you performed in? What's my favorite venue? Yeah. Um. Mm, that's a good question. Um, I think I always liked, you know, back in the day, you know, especially when we when we really started rolling, some of the clubs in Europe were were more advanced than the than the clubs that we had in the United States. I remember going to a club in like Ireland one time, and I mean they had like a and now mind you, this is this is still in like eighty nine or ninety. And they had like a $2 million light system in this club. Oh, this, wow. You know, yeah, you know what I mean? And it was just <laughs> like I had never seen anything like it. And, you know, they just took that shit real serious and, and, and did it. But then as we, as we went on, I, you know, I, I remember us performing at Soldier Field, right? And that's, you know, Chicago. Soldier Field, you know, fit 100,000 people. It's like that's one of the legit. biggest that ever paid, or or um, or um, Wembley Arena in mm. London Holy with Run DMC. That shit was nuts. That's huge. 
Yep, and public enemy. <laughs>